hello good afternoon everybody well good evening actually um i've been wanting to do um, a video for a long time i'm very sorry i haven't been able to um, to do so but uh parenthood you know fatherhood is quite the job um i just wanted to talk briefly and i'm, I'm gonna try to be briefly about um uh, i'm using uh another video actually an interview or as a reference that i will um I will link below of um, the greatly missed, wonderful tenor Jerry Hadley, in which um, the title of the video is uh, Jerry Hadley um, talks uh, singing technique or something like that. Don't take me for granted. Just, just honestly, um, I, I'll, I'll put the link below because the, the video doesn't belong to me, and I don't want to, um, you know, borrow. Uh, something so I don't know so special in a way uh, but please watch it because it's, it's mind-blowing so I wanted to sort of develop ever so slightly that so the title of this video would be you know why aren't there so many great singers as before and maybe this is a very sens sensitive yeah sensitive t uh, subject um, but um, unfortunately, I have to uh, give my my opinion or you know share my my two cents. Um, as a singer myself, as a professional singer for you know quite a few years, uh, and now as a as a teacher, coach, whatever you want to call me, um, there 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 have been periods of of my life in which I've been very very lost in terms of my vocal technique and um and my frame of reference that's something that I, I borrowed from from Hadley himself that is fantastic what it's what, what does it mean frame of reference well um I, I basically I started how to you know I started to sing and I started to learn how to sing by listening to the great singers of the past in in my case being a tenor um I'm gonna say that the, the first singer that I ever tried to impersonate in a way was uh, Caruso. Um, to this day, for me, it's just uh, a reference, right? Uh, it's just amazing. Um, and we're talking about uh, somebody whose recordings are more than a century old. So, why do I say this frame of reference? Um, as Jerry Hadley puts very, very clear, states very clear in this interview, we have substitute um, in, in vocal pedagogy, um, artists, you know, singers, by sometimes academics, well, as he states, well intended, not even intended whatsoever, but basically, that have mixed, um, uh, you know, the elements of, of what vocal technique and, and the use of it thereof, and artistry, uh, and, and they have they, they 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 lacked the second one, you know. Um, so I have here, um, you know, a collection of books that I have been compiling throughout the years, and I'm gonna say what. I consider to be dangerous and not, and I hope nobody gets offended. And if you get offended, you know, get out of it. Sorry, it's just my opinion. So here we go. This is considered to be the first um, scientifically orientated, uh, you know, um, compilation on vocal technique. You know, this is. Uh, uh, Garcia's son, so it's Garcia Jr., by the way, he invented the laryngoscope. And um, this is one amazing book. This is one amazing book. However, for a singing student, wow, um, if, he, if he or she can make anything out of this, um, it's going to be, you know, quite, quite hard. But anyway, yeah, yeah. it's quite old. It's quite old. It's quite, quite, quite the jewel. But anyway, this... This doesn't do any harm. This is not a gimmick. This is old-fashioned and is a sort of historical kind of reference. Okay. Well, 
here we have, you know, I don't know. Have you read it? You should. I must admit that this book helped me um, a great deal uh, in some point, especially this page. Today, I must say that it, it doesn't mean anything to me, but back in the day, it did for, for a while when I was very lost. Um, okay, why this is not as dangerous? Because this comes like from somebody close to the source of things you know singer herself that was sort of a, you know back in the in touch with the source which means that the composers when we talk and hadley makes a very good remark when we talk about singers such as maybe caruso for example or uh, you know tamaño um sort of miguel fleta for, you know, in the case of tenors sorry being a tenor these people knew um the composers, for example, Tamaño knew Verdi, uh, Caruso knew Puccini, so did Fleta, right? Um, Gigli also, you know, uh, knew um, Puccini. So, what what happened? You know, why nowadays, uh, sadly, also expresses, it is forbidden to listen to those amazing singers from the past, and all of a sudden, we encountered that you know, people that really um, praise this art. I'm talking about opera. Uh, they always talk with this nostalgia about the great singers of the past. All right. So who doesn't talk about Callas, Tetrazzini, Obratsova, um, I don't know, uh, Balza, and then of course, Mario del Monaco. Benjamino Gigli, Caruso, Tagliavini, um, Miguel Fletta, right? Uh, yeah, and many of you may say, hey, what about Placido Domingo and, um, you know, and Carreras and Pavarotti? And I say, well, that's the other thing. You, know, you have taken the art outside the opera houses and you have changed the criteria, how you are going to judge, how you're going to criticize, how you're going to perceive that. So, you know, the perception of the art has changed and so has influenced, you know, students, the, the modern contemporary singers and contemporary technique, expectations and so on. So I have a bunch of books. This one is in Spanish. And um, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, but again, you know, very controlling, you know, if you don't do this, what is here, you know, with these fancy, smancy, you know, diagrams and stuff, uh, then that's it, you know, you have to do this. So it's very controlling, very, you know, you must do that and if you don't. Now, this one, this is uh, another jewel, Lampertis, who haven't, who, who hasn't heard about the La Lotta Vocale, you know, the, 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 the vocal struggle in a way or the, the vocal fight to be honest and then they criticize because you know here he says you have to maintain the the position of inspiration and you say well how the hell do you do that and then actually Meloki then says okay la lotta vocale happens right here why because this is the source of the sound this is where it's made and people are scared of you know leaning against your uh, throat because then immediately they, they say oh tension constriction and you're a throat record well i think del monaco and corelli they had great careers and so did many other um singers before and after um well another one ramon regidor this is uh, this used to be a, uh, I believe um, um head of vocal department at the madrid conservatory Again, very, you know, with all the diagrams and stuff, the student will get absolutely you know, lost. Why? Because these are gimmicks. These are gimmicks. Hello. Yeah. Caruso's method of voice production. But who, 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 who writes this? Caruso? No. Professore Mario Marafiotti, a doctor. It's not the same. So even we're talking back in the day, and yet we have, again, this sort of, you do this, guarantees are, you know, that you're going to sound like Caruso. No way, Jose. 
No way. Cornelius L. Reed. Now, interesting, interesting, but again, promises, 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 and more promises. You know, sorry. Too intellectual. Too intellectual. The free voice. So you read this book, and then your voice is going to be free. No. Not in a million years. I, I have gone through all these books. But again, these ones are not extremely gimmicky and dangerous. Um, the first one I ever had, Madeleine Manson. Yeah, this one is originally in French, but this is a, a Spanish tra tra translation. So, L'Etude du Chant. Okay, first edition is 1947. Um, well, interesting. Uh, I, I studied it thoroughly, but again, you know, oh, look at that. You see that? Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Bye bye, American Pie. Um, okay, this is a rare specimen. This is written by Lauri Volpi, and actually, this is philosophy. This is philosophy. Um, many people um, might not know this, but Giacomo Lauri Volpi was a, a very, I mean, he was a diva, of course, but he was a very intelligent man that actually studied in um in a catholic seminarium if, if, if you understand what it is a catholic school to become a priest i mean this guy could speak latin fluently he spoke latin and i know it because my grandfather was friends with him and actually the the the, the translation is made by uh manuel torregrosa who was one of my grandfather's best friend an amazing, amazing book, but again, has nothing, you know, basically to do with technique or anything, but about singing in a metaphysical way. What else? Well, um, on studying singing. Again, somebody tells you, you know, this guy, Sergius Kagan, tells you, or Kagan, Kagan sounds very bad, <laughs> sorry, uh, how you, you know, how you must study singing, you know, what's going to happen to you? Um, an entire book, uh, an entire book on how to classify uh, different voices. I mean, do you really need an entire book and, and all the, with all the roles and stuff? And so controlling, just putting people in a cage. Not good, not good. And now we start going into dangerous territory. I have this uh, Italian book, actually. I bought this in one of my... Uh, I was uh, singing uh, nearby uh, Verona. And I, I, I came to, you know... I went into a bookshop and I found this. Now, this starts to be slightly dangerous. Il canto come tecnica, la foniatria come arte. So, the sing as a technique and... Uh, I don't know, phoniatrics, you know, uh, would be an art. Wow, mm, dangerous, wow, you know, um, there you go. I mean, you know, we're, he's telling you what people must perceive. And again, you have, the only, the only, the only thing I like about this is that actually it um, encourages people to train at least, you know, lightly with weights. So that's okay, that's, that's good. But uh, yet again, um, it's too complex, you know, and, and besides, you know, they, is this guy naked? Is he naked? Uh, and uh, he's been touched by the doctor at some point. Naked! Ah, censorship now, anyway. Um, it's too complex. It's too, it's too much, too much. And now we start to go into the fix. Boom. Richard Miller, yeah, he sang in Zurich. I don't know how many years, but boy oh boy. This, and I'm sorry, you might criticize me, and maybe this this, this uh, book, I mean, sorry, this video will have, you know, a lot of criticism, but uh, hello? Um, you must know some physiology. In fact, Melocchi studied you know, the, the, the physiology of the throat and all that. Um, but of course, you know, we're talking about 1907, right? But uh, this, this is too much. This is, this is too much. This is too much. 
too much for anybody. Academics. And promises. Right? Solutions for singers. So you have a problem? Yeah. Oh, I have a problem in F sharp or whatever. Where, what do I do? Yeah. Falling back on the vowel. Ah. Why do so many singers complain uh, that the vowel ah, as in ah, falls back? Really? Do they? I don't know. Dangerous. And uh, I have many more. This is a small selection. Last but not least, a whole book on how to train tenor voices. And I remember, you know, I think this teacher, um, Sue McCulloch, God bless her, she's fantastic. And so, so, um, um, I don't know, joyful and, and well, such a wonderful human being, really. Uh, she, 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 she was to me, um, you know, like a, like a mother when I was at the Guild Hall. But at the beginning, she, she, yeah, I wanted her to teach me. And she said, no, sorry, I don't teach tenors. Uh, she was a soprano herself. And, uh, and when I asked why, and basically she told me something that I think she stole the line from a, from a movie, I think from the, the Great Caruso. She said something like, tenor, the tenor is not a voice, it's a disease. <laughs> but she was right. Now, this is scary. What the hell? You know, all these frequencies and decibels and all that. Really, you, you, you want to study singing and, and you, this? So, what happens well, when you are an, an artist and, uh, and you really reflect upon your vocal technique and you want to do the best you can, sometimes you get lost and maybe you start writing your own book. So, this is the first volume. I mean, yeah, I'm a bit of a bit of a nerd. Okay, so it looks like it was written in the 19th century. This is my this is my book, based on many books, but based mainly on my experiences. Uh, because it has like a diary. A diary, for example, this is from uh, here, uh, 20th of December, 2000. Wow, I went to a high C on an A, and I did it by yawning. And then blah blah blah. And from A4, I have to do this. And okay, so this is more. Uh, yeah, I have, I have, you know, like like um, advice from many singers and many uh, teachers and you know colleagues, what not scales. Um, some drawings, I think. I think I reproduced Lot Lemons uh, somewhere here. Here, oh yeah, 2002. Definitely, support is some sort of pressure that goes because it's in Spanish. I'm translating the ghost, you know, you're pushing with your belly inwards. I don't believe that anymore. But anyway, those are my, you know, here, Adrian, Adrian Thompson, Penelope McKay, Laura Sarti. I mean, I went through so many, so many teachers, so many teachers. And at the end, um, what Jerry Hadley says, you are your own teacher. At the, at the very end, you teach yourself how to sing. You just need a guide. So a teacher, a vocal coach is just a guide. But that vocal coach is not going to be able to give you everything you need. You're going to have to find, as he says, some things by yourself. And uh, if we talk about frame of reference, I would say listen to the great singers of the past. Uh, perhaps they took many liberties, many liberties in, sense, in the sense of you know, they introduced back in the day, you know, extra notes or they, they played with the cadence like mad and the tempi and whatnot. But in terms of, of voice production and expression, as I said, what, what, why, what's so wrong with all these technical advances and we still have this nostalgia and we talk about Franco Corelli the whole time. And we, uh, you know, criticize very much modern 
tenors, and I'm not gonna say names because I don't want to be, um, you know, uh, nasty about it. Because, and, and I don't have, I don't think I have the, um, how would I say, the the right to criticize anybody. As I said in in, in um, many interviews and, and podcasts and stuff, anybody that has actually been on stage deserves my respect. I have been there. I know what it is. And I try to transmit that, you know, as a, as a legacy in a way. That's why I enjoy doing these videos, for example. It's part of my legacy. Um, so that said, uh, if you want to learn how to sing, know these first. You know how to sing already. You just need a guide. You need somebody to help you get that that, that is inside you and get it out and use it properly. Then you need a good frame of reference. And if, uh, as Hadley states, if a voice teacher doesn't encourage, a modern contemporary voice teacher doesn't recommend, doesn't encourage his, her students to listen to the great um, singers in the past. And actually nowadays Hadley is a reference. So I would, you know, I would recommend my students to actually sing, uh, listen to Jerry Hadley because he did his home homework in that sense, then you will never um, get everything because you will only get gimmicks and uh, tips and tricks. So yeah, I wanted the video to be shorter, but I, yeah, you know, the preach inside me. Uh, so, you know, I will leave it as in, you know, I don't know if you've seen Karate Kid, right? Karate Kid Part 1. 1983, 1984, you know, when Miyagi Sensei, he says, you know, he comes into the Daniel LaRusso's apartment and he sees him kicking, you know, and he's learning karate from a book. And he says, oh, karate, right? Learning karate from a book. Well, it's the same thing. Learning singing from a book. Think about it. All right, that's all for today. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. I'll be very, very glad to answer. And uh, thank you ever so much to everybody for, you know, subscribing and liking and, uh, you know, and uh, supporting and commenting and so on. And uh, yeah, to my students, just, just keep, on, keep on searching for it because you'll find it. All right, all the best to all of you. See you soon.